All right, guys. To find the area to the left of negative 1.75, there are two ways to do that. We use a table that will be provided to you anytime you do an exercise like this while you're doing your homework online, or you can use technology. I'm gonna start with using the table. Be honest with you, if the book does not emphasize on the table at all, I wouldn't even bother to use the table at all. But when you do your homework online and you need help, it's gonna show you the table. It's not gonna show you technology. So I think it is important that you understand how uh, to use the table. And it is called the table of z-scores. So that's why we're working, you know, just with z-scores. And the table will be able to tell you what the area to the left of negative 1.75 is. Let me show you, first of all, how to use uh, the table. There is a table called table four for this chapter. Here it is. And it is dedicated to give you the area to the left of the z-score that you specify. Your z-score, guys, in this question is negative 1.75. You want help from the table, and let me show you how you can get the help from the table. Your negative 1.75, it has a whole number of negative one, and it has two decimals, which is a 0.75. The 10th digit is seven, and the 100th digit is five. You go here, first of all, and look for the negative 1.7, just the first two digits right here. You look for it right here, right here, negative 1.7. Then you look for the five guys in here, the hundredth uh, digit, it's right there. And I think you guys know what I'm gonna do now. From the five, you drop a vertical line. From the negative 1.7, you drop a horizontal line and where the two meet will be your answer. So it will be 0.04, zero one and that would be the area and that's how you use the table this table is dedicated to find the area to the left of the target but you need to specify the target which is the z here so let's do another one together but now i'm going to ask you to help me find the answer so i'm just going to put another area here This is, and I'm gonna put the Z here. So what's the area to the left of Z equal negative 0 0.64? Well, I need to show the table guys in order for you. So just remember the number, negative 0 0.64. Okay, what would that be, guys? Point two six one one. Two six one one. Okay, let's see. So you went here for yeah, I agree. Two six one one. As simple as that. So it's not difficult to use the table. Okay. Now let's do so two six one one. There's another one. I want the area to the left of Z equal 1.12. And I'm gonna show you the table where we have positive Z scores. This is two page table guys, one with a positive and one with negative. And I'll put the table right here and ask you, remember the number guys, 1.112. What would it be? 5478. 1128. One, oh, never mind. No, no. I was 0.1. Right here. Yeah. 8686. Eight, yeah. 
8686, guys. As simple as that. Okay, let's make it a little bit harder now. Still using the table. I'm gonna show you the table now one more time, but let me sketch it. There's another one. I wanted to practice using the table before I use technology. And then you guys, you can decide. I won't impose one method over the other on you. You can use whatever method you like. Okay, I want you to look carefully guys before you answer. I'm not asking you to find the area to the left of negative 0.82. I'm asking you to find the area to the right of negative Z, Z equal negative 0 0.82. So why don't we find that score? And then once we find that score on the chart, we minus it by a hundred because we know hundred percent is the full exactly. graph. Yeah, that is very correct. So you guys, you still use the table, but the table is not going to give you the answer to the right. It's going to give you the answer to the left. But since you know that both answers will add up to 100%, you just subtract it from one. It's exactly what you said. So I'm going to have you do the negative 0 0.82, guys. Right here. You should be able to see it. Negative 0 0.82. It would be here. Uh, two, zero, six, one. But remember what the table does, it gives you this. And that's not what I want. I want the other one. So I will have to subtract the answer from one. So your answer will be. Um, I got 0.7939. Yeah, that is correct. This is how the table, the table doesn't work in your favor always. If it is to the left, it will work in your favor. Just do use it as is. But if it is to the right, if he says find the area to the right, you will have to find the area to the left first and then subtract the answer from one. Okay. Just one second. Okay, here is another one, guys. Let's think about it. I'm gonna do this. And then you will have learned how to use the table in all scenarios. I'm gonna give you those two values. How do you find this area using the table? Don't you have to find those two Z scores? Oh, those are the Z scores, right? These are the Z scores. Okay, okay. Uh, then subtract those. Well, mm -hmm. So what you're saying, find the two areas using the table and subtract the areas. Yeah, but the first yeah. one's negative, so... It I doesn't mean... matter. We have to use the negative side of the table. Okay. okay. So a negative 1.45, guys, watch. Find me the answer, first of all. What was it, negative 4.5? Negative 1.45. 0 0.0735. Okay, let me see, you're faster than me. 1.45. Okay, 0 0.0735, I agree. So let me write it down. And these tables will be like provided like on the homework. And then we're going to do the 1.82. Let's do the 1.82 now. Okay. 
All right, guys. So can you detect the 1.82 now? 9656. 9656. I agree. And you guys make sense to do the bigger area minus the smaller area. Because look, the 1.82, it's going to give you, watch, the 1.82, the area is going to give you everything all the way to the end. And the negative 1.45 is going to subtract the one that you don't need. So it does make sense to find the two areas and subtract them. And if you subtract them, you will get uh, 0 0.965, 656 minus 0 0.07. Three five, and the answer is zero point eight nine two one. This is how you use the table guide, table four. It's called the standard normal table. Now, the, all the, the space in the middle, like the shaded part. Exactly. So in between, you just have to do the area to the left of one point eight two, the area to the left. Uh, of negative 1.45, and then you subtract them. And you guys, in geometry, if you have like one shape within another shape and you find the area in between, you do the big one minus the small one and you get the answer. So it's pretty much, you know, just the same thing. Now we're gonna go to using technology and see how we could have done that using technology instead of using tables. And you guys, you have that choice. You can use technology or uh, you, you can use the calculator. Uh, I'm sorry, use the table, table four. So exercise two. It says use the standard normal table to find the area to the left of Z equal 1.15. So I'm going to use the table, but I'm going to show you how to produce this answer using technology. So 1.15, guys, if you can look at it and see what the answer is. So 1.15, it will be 1.1 here, and then five. So you guys agree it is what? 0.8749. Okay, well, let's say I don't have the table. How would I, how would I find that? So ready, so let me show you how nice the calculator is in doing this. Let me sketch this one first so you can see it. To the left of 1.15, it will be something like that. This is zero. 1.15, guys, you have to make it to the right of zero because it's positive, so that's Z. And he wants this area. And that's Z. All right. Before we use technology, let me just address a few things and probably you can help me with it. Remember the tail extends indefinitely from this side and extends indefinitely from the right hand side. Okay. Does this area have a lower limit? Does it end from the left guys? That's the question. The red, what I shaded in red, does it end from the left? No, it's indefinite. No, it doesn't. It's indefinite. Give me a number to represent something that's indefinite but from the left. What would you use? You have to use a number. What would what number would come to your mind? Negative infinity. Yeah. Okay, rather than negative. Okay, negative infinity. Very good. We're gonna use a number. So look, let's agree on this number. Instead of negative infinity, we're going to agree in negative a million or billion. Just put one with a few zeros. So that's the, that's, they call it the lower end, or they call it the lower bound or the lower limit. Does this area have an upper end, guys? Does it end from the right? No, it doesn't end from the right, doesn't it? Why not? Where, how, how far does it go to the right? It goes up to what? One point what? 
It goes up one to one. Five. Yeah, so that, that it doesn't exceed 1.15. This is called your upper limit. And this number, guys, that you said negative infinity, this is called your lower limit. Your calculator, in order for the calculator, guys, to find this area, you need to tell the calculator what's your lower limit and what's your upper limit. Once you tell the calculator those two values, the calculator will give you the area. And it should, the calculator should give us exactly the same answer, 8749. So I'm ready now after I explain what the lower and the upper are. Uh, I'm gonna explain uh, how to use the calculator. So watch. You turn the calculator on, you clear this, you press second and distribute. Look, it's distribution, it's a normal distribution. So we're still working with distribution. So second and variables. Oops, second and variables. And it's number two guys. This is the highlight of the chapter, number two. It says normal cumulative density function. That's the function that we'll be using in this chapter. Do you see guys that it's asking for a lower and an upper? The lower guys, we agree it's a negative a million. If a student would like to put more zeros, feel free, put as many zeros as you want. The upper, we agree guys, it's 1.15. So it's always when you do area to the left, you have to begin with negative a million. And then the upper will be where the curve ends. And then let me tell you what the zero one is. Zero is the mean of the standard normal curve and sigma equals one is the standard deviation of standard normal curve. By default, the calculator suspects that you are putting zero and one and it will do it for you. So just keep the zero and one when you work with Z. And paste. And here you go, 8749. Actually, the calculator gives me a more accurate answer, give me more decimal places. And it is 0.8749. So if I am to use technology here, using TI 84, area to the left, of Z equals 1.15 will be equal guys, normal CDF. You put your lower bound negative a million, upper bound 1.15 and then you put comma zero comma one and you get the answer which is 0 0.8749. Okay. Now find the area to the right of Z equals 1.23. How did I do, how would I do that using the uh, table guys, 1.23? If you can just remind me. This is 1.23, how would you do it? To the right now. You find everything to the left of it. Yes, and then do what? One minus that. One, exactly, very good. So 1.23. 0.8907, and then you have to subtract the sensor. The beauty of technology, you don't have to do that. It will give it in one shot. So we do area to the left of 1.23 using the table. I forgot what it was. Uh, 0.8907. And then the area to the right, guys, you have to do 1 minus 0.8907. which is one zero nine three. Well, guys, let's use technology and do it in one shot rather than doing two steps. I'm gonna do this one using TI 84. But before I do it, I'm gonna sketch it. So probably you can help me detect the lower bound and the upper bound. And then after that, you don't need really to sketch it. Once you hear the way, see the word right, you know what to do right away. So 1.23, you just put a zero here. 1.23 should be here to the right. 
and you guys agree with me to the right should be this area. Professor, can you lift your paper up a little bit? Yep, of course. All right. <clears throat> Give me the lower bound and the upper bound, guys. Lower bounds 1.23. Yep. And the upper can be a million or. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to get to. Million, a thousand, even a thousand would work. You're talking about Z score of a million. We know Z score can't even exceed three. So imagine you're putting a million. That's too, too, too much. Wait, Professor, I'm kind of confused now. What? Uh, how's the lower bound? Isn't it supposed to be negative a million? The no, lower the lower bound, bound is the area shaded in red. The lower bound means where, where does this area begin at? You can see that the area begins right here at this vertical line. So on this one, we're going from right to left. Exactly. No, from left to right still. Left to right still? Yeah. Left, right. We're going this way. And even with the other one, we went the same way. Watch. Look what we did with the other one. We went this way. The lower is a negative a million and then to the larger number 1.15. Here, we're going from 1.23 and up, but up where the sky is the limit, so we just put a million. So it's always this way. Always, guys, you start this way. Pick up the number that starts here and pick up the number that starts there. If you want, this is what I tell students to do. I tell students shade, you know, just that region on the X axis, just shade it right here. And read it, you know, just from left to right. So they read 1.23 here, and then they see here that there is no limit, they just put a million. And that's how, this is how you read it. So using calculator guys, it's gonna be normal CDF. You're gonna put 1.23 first. Then you're gonna put a million next. Then you're gonna put zero and then you're gonna put one and you will get the answer. Let's do it. So when it is to the right guys, you start with the value that he gives you. Then here you put this. And here you go, 1093, that's the answer. And I think the easiest thing to do using technology when you find the area in between two values. So let's do this now. Um, what answer did you get right now on the calculator? 1093. 10, which is exactly the same answer as we got using the table. But the table, we have to do two steps. So actually, you don't need to do this, guys, anymore. You can use the calculator directly. And now, if I do this, guys, can you help me use technology to do this? And I think never had students made mistakes when it comes to the area in between, because there is no confusion here at all. That's Z. Okay, guys, what would be the area here using the calculator? Let me get the calculator ready. Okay. Can you tell me guys what's the lower and what's the upper? That should be pretty straightforward. No thousand, no millions here. Negative 1.05 is the lower. Yeah, start from left to right guys. Negative 1.05 is the lower and what's the upper? 0.94. Exactly. When he tells you find the area between two values guys, don't be confused. Just put the lower as the first value and the upper as the second value and that's it. Here you go, six, seven, nine, five. I'll write down the steps. Feel free to ask guys if you have any questions.
and don't forget the zero and one. Students asked me earlier this morning, do we have to always put zero one? Yes, when you work with Z, it's always zero and one. And that will be point six seven. I think the book will ask you online to round to three or four decimal places. So just get used to rounding to four or three uh, decimal places. Any questions here? So we're finding the area to the left of negative 0 0.99. It's right there, 0 0.9. And look, I need the other nine. So it's the first one actually, 0 0.1611. Look, guys, 0.1611. But let's use a normal CDF here. Or. What would be the lower and the upper? What's the lower, guys? Start always this way. So this one. Do you guys agree it's a negative a million? And then negative 0 0.99 comma zero, comma one, and I don't need to do it, guys. I know the answer It's gonna be 1.1611. 1 Let's do some more practice. I want the area to the left of Z equals negative 0 0.47. If I sketch it, guys, and let's use technology now. It will look like this. You do the normal curve. You put a zero here on the center always. And negative 0 0.47, guys, should be a number below zero. And to the left is this area. Now, when you find the area to the left of Z equal negative 0 0.47, you are finding a probability. It's, it's a probability. Area, guys, is a probability. When you do it to the left of Z equal negative 0 0.47, that means you're finding the probability of Z below negative 0 0.47. And below means less than. So always when you do a left area, it's a less than. A right area, it's a greater than. So what is the probability that Z is less than negative 0 0.47? And we can use the normal CDF here. And can a student tell me what the four arguments are? Or at least the first two arguments. I know the rest two is 0, 1. What would be the lower bound here, guys? Yes? You could have a million. Could be a million. Correct. A million. And the upper? Negative 0 0.47. Got it. That is correct. Let's find the answer. As you can see the stable, guys, it's very easy. The function on the calculator is very easy to use once, once you have a good grasp, you know, just of it. I don't expect you to master it right away, but if you do more practice, we're just going to have a good feel about the. Con. So it's a 3192. Thirty-one 31.92%. Let's do the second one. I'm, I'm going to do it using calculator here. So when he asks you to find the area to the right of Z equals 1.28, he's asking you to find a probability of Z bigger than 1.28. Because when you go to the right of a number, guys, you're going larger than a number. And you go to the left, you're going smaller. So let me sketch this one. And you guys can help me with the lower and uh, left bound. Do we need to sketch it? No, but I'm sketching it now. So because I'm just started to teach you this stuff. You need time to have a visual. You can visualize this. This is the zero. Remember, don't put 1.28 below zero. Put it above zero anywhere you want. And look, guys, to the right, it's this area. OK, so we need probability of z bigger than 1.28. 
which is if I want to use normal CDF with the students, please give me the four arguments here. What would they be? There you go. That's more clear here. So I need the left bound, upper bound, mean, and standard deviation. What would be the left bound, guys? Um, wouldn't it be 1.28 for the left one? That is correct. That is correct. And then the upper bound would be 1 million? Yeah, that's correct. And then wouldn't it be 0 and 1? Exactly. 0 and 1. That's the key. Only when you work with Z, you put 0 and 1. So let me just do that for you guys. Normal CDF. 1.28. No need to do one minus guys here. We're not using table, just do it direct. I know some students in the past would just use the calculator and tell me you said you subtract the answer from one. I said, you do that if you use the table. If you don't use a table, this is gonna give you the correct answer right away. So one zero zero three. Uh, let me write it down here. Okay. Area between Z equal negative 1.1 and Z equal 1.73. Here's how you express this as an equality, as a probability, guys. You put those two signs like this. You put the smaller number first. And this is the bigger number there. So that means Z between, what's the probability of Z between negative 1.1 and 1.73? And I don't think I need to sketch it, guys, here. It's obvious, it's normal. CDF, you just put negative 1.1 as your lower bound. 1.73, don't mix them. You have to put the lower one and then the larger one after. And then zero and one and watch guys. It saves a lot of time actually. It's a lot faster than using the tables. So you have to have the tables ready. So negative 1.1, 1 1.73, 1 1 there you go, 0.8225. Um, just show you some practice exercises that you can do. Uh, before tomorrow's class. This is toward the end of the uh, guided notebook, guys. Let's, I just want to do uh, number one. Find a probability of Z less than 1.14. Can you guys help me out? What would be lower, upper, mean, and standard deviation? Less than 1.14. So we're going from 1.14 and less. Negative a million. Negative a million. Very good. So now you learn the lesson. Less than, you begin with the negative a million. 1.14, zero and one guys, and then you can get the answer. So a probability of Z less than 1.14, it's, it's the same thing as area to the left of Z equals 1.14. And find the area to the left of Z equals 1.09 guys. It's the same thing as the probability of Z less than 1.09. So left guys means less than and right means greater than. And that will be just exactly the same as you did before. All right. We will uh, work on this uh, tomorrow after we finish uh, the chapter tomorrow or Tuesday. The last thing I would like to do guys what about if I don't have Z scores? I have actual values, X values. 
and I have a mean and a standard deviation, the actual original mean and standard deviation. I didn't change to these scores. What does that mean? How can I find the probability of X less than 600 here? You can still use the normal CDF, guys. I'm going to use technology first, and then I'm going to show you, you could have done this using table as well. So who can help me? Normal CDF. What would it be? Negative a million. Negative a million. Very good. You're learning your lesson. And then what? 600. Yes. Okay, let me make a mistake. That's it. Done. Wrong answers. We're not using Z here. When you're using Z, you use zero one. We're not using Z. So what do you think I should use here? 500 and 100. Yeah, 500 and 100. That makes sense, right, guys? And now let's see what the answer is. This is a very easy uh, chapter, guys, if you just grasp, you know, just the idea of using technology to find those probabilities. Very straightforward. As you can see, it's a lot of repetition. I'm just doing the same thing. And uh, watch, guys, that's the answer. 0.8413. And that is the answer. So if you have the actual data and working with the X, guys, uh, you uh, you just supply the mean and the standard deviation and you're all set. Don't put zero one if you're working with X. Look, here it says X, but over the it says Z. Yes, any questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want, can we just make the X into a Z and just keep uh, it? Very good. That's the segue to uh, what I'm going to finish the lesson with. So I told students this morning, let's say your calculator was out of batteries. The instructor says you can use it, but you don't have any batteries and your homework is due in 10 minutes and you really need to answer this question. Can you use the table? Of course you can use the table, but remember the table is only for Z scores. If you don't have a Z scores, forget about the table. You cannot use it. So what we can do, so a student said right away, Mr. Bazzi, we can change 600 to a Z score. I said, perfect. That's what I want to do. So look, if you change 600 to a Z score, so using table four, and I'll end discussions, guys, with uh, this. Change X equals 600 to Z score. Now, how do we change it? We have a formula. You learned the formula in chapter two. So Z equals value, which is 600, minus the mean, which is 500, divided by the standard deviation, which is 100 over 100, which is one. So now, instead, guys, of finding probability of X less than 600, you find a probability of Z less than what? One. One. And then you go to the table. Let me show you. And if I don't get the same answer, I'm in trouble here. But don't worry, I'm not worried. We're going to get the exact same answer. Less than one. Which is 1.00, guys. So this is one. 0.00. 0.8413. Watch. 8413. And that you can do it by hand using table four. Now, if you guys have access to technology, use this. If you're seeking help from the homework online, he's going to show you how to do it this way and use the table, it's gonna, the table is gonna pop up. It's gonna show you after you change, you know, the 600 to a Z score, how to use the table. But 
when it comes guys to assessment or anything, I'm gonna give you the option, you know, just to use technology right away. Just input the lower bound, the upper bound, the mean, the standard deviation, and you will get the same answer. The two would lead to the same uh, results. And eventually guys, probably in a few years from now, you won't see those tables in a statistics book anymore. Because nobody expected students, you know, just to carry tables, you know, just put them in their pocket or people, you know, which carry tables to find answers. They're just going to be using technology, you know, just to find answers. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize on here.